here um, because this is a really interesting topic. We're talking about managing obesity and the collaborative approaches to obesity. So I've got um, Sandy Green here and Kadir Hussain who are going to talk to you about this really fantastic topic. I will be back at the end for Q&A. So if you um, have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to add them into the chat and um, and we'll get them answered at the end um, for you. And um, I shall now hand over to um, Sandy and I will be back later. Thanks so much, Vicky. Thank you. So let me just click on the presentation. Um, Lucy, can you help? That's the second presentation. Have you got one? Sandy, if you just click on the left hand side where it says presentations further up, further up, second icon down. Yeah, I've clicked on that. It's just your presentation. Sorry about this, everybody. Okay, it might be that you would close this presentation. Yep, now click on the presentation icon, second one down. Perfect. Okay, so Sandy Green, there we go. Thanks for your patience on that one, everybody. So, yeah, I'm here to, to actually talk about the National Medical Weight Loss Programme. So we're going to jump straight into it. And there's going to be a little bit of a disclaimer, first of all, because it's important that you're all made aware that um, the Facebook is an open Facebook forum. So the it, access from the general public um, is possible. So for that reason, and in line with MHRI, MHRA compliance, it's important for me to to say to you that we won't be discussing any prescription medications and please don't ask questions around those if you do have any questions though just please um send those uh, any of those to the address so quite simply the um the learning objective for us all today is to help registered healthcare professionals understand the opportunity that's in front of them in creating a successful weight management service to help people living with overweight and obesity. And we're going to go through or, or try to achieve that with our agenda, starting off with stating the definition, classification and statistics on obesity. We're going to outline some of the key health uh, risks associated with obesity, understand the challenges faced by people living with obesity in terms of the current service provision in the NHS. And then we're going to talk about some of the benefits uh, of becoming a certified partner of our programme. So looking first of all at the definition and classification of obesity. And um, we're going to use the World Health Organization for this. And they say that overweight and obesity are defined as abnormal or assessed excessive fat accumulation that presents a risk to health and that's the key there um, this risk to health their classification um, identifies a crude measure of obesity um, is the body mass index and quite simply that's the person's weight in kilograms divided by the square of their height in meters and there are in fact um, six different classes within the BMI structure. And here they are. So a person with a BMI of between 25 to 29.9, that's this one uh, on its own here is classed as overweight. And anyone with a BMI of um, above 30 um, is classed as obese. And obese is further divided into three more subclasses so obesity class one, obesity class two, and obesity class three. And this is the normal weight range, um, 18.5 to 24.9. When you actually go through um, the, the different BMI classes, um, the higher you get up um, the scale, as it were, then the risk of a comorbidity being associated with your health is, is increased quite significantly. Some of the statistics on obesity in the UK is what we'll look at now. And this is from, um, sorry, can I just move that somewhere? This is from the House of Commons briefing paper. And these statistics were published just last year in August last year. But the data is actually from 2017. And um, the 
the briefing paper identified that 28.7% of adults are overweight in the UK. And that means um, a, a BMI of between 25 and 29.9. A further 35.6% are actually obese, so their BMI is over 30. And that brings it to a, a huge total of 24.3%. So that's nearly two thirds of the adult UK population are actually overweight or obese. Now the Foresight Report, which again is the Department of Health publication, um, shows us in its publication the shape of things to come. And they estimate that following the current trends and without any action, 90% of adults in the UK will be either overweight or obese by the year 2050. A huge, huge problem. Now I want to touch now very briefly on um, where fat can be deposited. So I want to kind of touch on visceral fat and subcutaneous uh, fat. Um, so it's important that you kind of, uh, we go through this in great detail in the training course, but I want to kind of make a reference to the differences and um, I'm going to use the next few slides to actually show that. So someone who carries all of their weight around the middle, so they're defined if you like as apple shaped, they tend to have more visceral fat and visceral fat it, um, gives a person a greater risk of cardiometabolic disease. It's a, a much um, higher incidence of comorbidities with someone who's apple shaped, so they're carrying all of that visceral fat around their middle, as opposed to someone who's pear shaped, when that tends to be subcutaneous adipose tissue. So if I show you this slide, and you can actually see the impact of excess fat. So the yellow is the fat. So you can see on the person's arms, on their trunk, um, etc., on their thighs. But when you actually look at the internal um, fat, so the yellow that's spread and crushing all these organs, this is the visceral fat. And this is where we start to have a much greater impact on people's health. Um, an extraordinary slide here um, using two different MRI body scans of um, a person that's, well, they're both women, but this woman is 17 and a half stone and this woman is eight and a half stone. And you can clearly see uh, muscle is in red. Um, the uh, organs are in black. Bones are in white and the fat is in yellow. So you can see that in terms of um, the comparison, the lungs pretty much look the same size, but the person in this diagram or in this image is going to have um, a lot more problems um, in breathing. And that's because when she lays down, the visceral fat within the organs, within the in the central part of her body will actually um, Lay, lay down as well with her, if you like, and, and push upwards, crushing the lungs. And that means that she's going to have much more problem um, problems with breathing breathing difficulties, when she, particularly when she lays down. Now, when it comes to enlarged heart, um, the hearts themselves kind of look at a similar sort of size. Uh, sorry, they don't look as similar. The lungs are a similar sort of size. But when you actually look at the heart, the heart actually um, enlarges. Um, and that's in response to the, the muscle of the heart increases um, because of the added strain of the weight placing on the body. And an enlarged heart will, won't pump as effectively and is a common cause of heart failure. Then when we actually look at the strain on the joints, according to Arthritis UK, obesity is the single biggest cause of osteoarthritis uh, in those weight-bearing joints like the hips these poor hips carrying all that excess weight, the knees and also the ankles. And here's a, a diagram kind of showing that the difference uh, between a healthy heart and a heart surrounded all, by all of that visceral fat. Now visceral fat does pump out um, toxins and poisons into the body um, producing or creating inflammation and having 
quite a significant impact uh, affecting someone's health. So if I ask the question to you posed by Cancer Research UK, so CR UK, can you guess what's the biggest preventable cause of cancer after smoking? And of course, um, it is obesity. So we're talking now about preventable causes of cancer. And these are the number of deaths per year in the UK um, caused by cancer related to preventable causes. Now, overweight and, and obesity in the UK is the biggest cause after cancer, like I said, but it will actually, obesity can cause 13 different types of cancer and they're all listed here. This is MCR UK again. Now, the bigger the actual circle, the, the higher the prevalence of that particular type of cancer in individuals. So it's a huge um, significant um, problem that we need to help to address. Now, in addition to causing different types of cancer, excess body weight is associated with multiple conditions. And as a result, obesity has been found to reduce life expectancy. Now, interesting, interestingly, Dr. Lee Kaplan and his team identified a whopping 325 different diseases associated with obesity, which is phenomenal. Um, a slide that I absolutely love um, on, the, on the website by Nova Nordisk, um, Rethink, Rethink Obesity refers to and identifies the increased BMI actually increases the risk of mortality. And so somebody with a, a healthy BMI range, that, that individual actually has an 80% chance of reaching the age of 70. Somebody whose BMI increases, and they start to look now at a BMI of 35 to 40, their life expectancy or, or their chances of reaching the age of 70 comes down to just 60%. And actually only half of those people living with um, obesity class three, so those that are above the BMI of 40, only half of those have a chance of reaching the age of 70. So increasing your BMI will significantly reduce your life expectancy. So we've kind of touched on a few of the problems associated with obesity now when it comes to health. So let's have a look very briefly at looking at treating obesity. So this is the um, a tiered approach to, um, to obesity services in the NHS. And interestingly, this, this model was um, designed by Matt Capehorn, who is actually um, the co-author of, of uh, co-author and co-deliverer of the actual training and Matt's team, Matt had a huge um, award-winning practice um, tier three service over in Rotherham um, that we're going to talk about very, very shortly and um, because all the, as the funding got removed from uh, the NHS, his award-winning service actually had to get closed. So T1 services looks at universal interventions and they're the kind of government health promotion campaigns, your eat well, eat well your health matters, your five a day. And that's done from a national level. When you look at lifestyle interventions, um, I, I, this is something that um, the individual will go on to do, but they might jo join things like Slimming World, Weight Watchers, etc. When we start to look at what we refer to as tier three services, we now start to look at those specialist services. And these are MDTs. They are, these are now multidisciplinary teams, uh, clinically led, where we look at the pharmacotherapy, so drug therapy in treating obesity. We look at, psych, at psychologist intervention, nutrition. So typically um, a full service of health professionals helping to tackle obesity. And then tier four services, quite simply, are your different types of bariatric surgery, whether that's a, um, a band, a sleeve or a bypass. So it's important for you to kind of get a, an overview of the different um, tiers when we actually refer to obesity services. Because I want to talk now about service provision. Now, prior to 2017, NHS England offered 100% availability 
uh, for tier four bariatric surgery for every patient who met that inclusion criteria. In 2017, CCGs actually took over commissioning of these services. And by the end of that year, that 100% had fallen significantly down to just 73%. Now that was in 2017. Um, we don't have the latest figures, but I would imagine it's getting close, but probably down to about half, so about 50%. So we, the NHS uh, service provision, there's been a gradual erosion of obesity services up and down the UK with many, uh, many clinics closing um, as, as um, Matt's did actually in Rotherham. And GPs are no longer funded for prescribing two of the three weight loss medications that are available in the UK to treat obesity. Now, this isn't because they're not effective. It's because they're not cost effective. And that's the actual key here. So we find ourselves uh, facing nationally a, a huge problem. And that means that the decommissioning of services means that people living with obesity have nowhere to go to for help, support and treatment. So a couple of years ago, um, I worked with Kadir um, and I proposed the solution of setting up a national medical weight loss program and the program quite simply has a vision to ensure that every person living with obesity has access to treatment and how we actually want to achieve that is by us helping you so helping registered healthcare professionals set up your own private medical weight management service and you can do that by becoming a certified partner of the National Medical Weight Loss Program. So who can become one of our partners? This is really important. The program is available exclusively to registered healthcare professionals. So doctors, nurse prescribers, nurses, prescribing pharmacists, etc. Now nurses who are non-prescribers can actually um, set up a service, but they need to work with a prescriber who is also a certified partner. And this clearly was one of the um, stipulations when we actually got the course accredited with the RCN. So non-medical prescribing nurses must work with um, um, a prescribing individual, whether they're a doctor or, or pharmacist or whatever, provided they are also a partner. Alternatively, non-prescribing nurses can actually use um, our actual prescribing services as well. So a little bit then about the programme when it comes to the um, what I feel is expert accredited training that's available for you. The course took, took us um, just short of a year to get accredited with the Royal College of Nursing. Now, you, you, uh, those of you who are in the industry will appreciate the credibility that that accreditation gives to, to the actual course that we run. Um, but more significantly, I'm going to pass you over to Kadir just to jump in here, if you would. But looking at the World Obesity Federation and scope and the accreditation that we got there, what's the significance of that, Kadir? Uh, hi, everyone. Um... Yeah, just very quickly. So SCOPE stands for Strategic Centre for Obesity Professional Education. And it's the only internationally recognised um, certification in obesity management. It's endorsed by the NHS and over 50 associations globally. So I think it's important that this accreditation was gained. And I think it should give delegates um, a lot of confidence when, when going on to the course. Thank you, Kadir. So um, just adding on to talking about the training, we've covered the fact that um, the course is delivered by and was co-authored and is co-delivered by myself and Matt. Matt actually is an expert advisor on obesity. It's an accredited course and we deliver in-depth evidence-based medicine complying with all the regulatory policies, procedures and guidelines. And the course, we're actually helping partners set up a successful business model to deliver safe, legal and ethical medical weight management. Um, I'm just going to whiz through these, but these are some you can actually play back on Facebook later if you want to go through. I've literally got tens and tens and tens of these, but this is just 
um, a handful of certified partners that we have that actually have all test testified um, about uh, their, their opinion on the course. Okay, so um, the National Medical Weight Loss Programme, obviously we have our preferred suppliers. When it comes to insurance, um, we work with Cosmetic Insure. They've given us, or we've actually been able to negotiate with them, an exclusive rate for partners. Anybody want to kind of find out a little bit more, then um, please ask us in the questions. Uh, we also work with Inspire to Outstand for those um, individuals that need to have CQC registration. And that's a whole different other discussion, let's face it. Um, but only medical pro professionals, so only doctors, um, offering the service uh, need to register for CQC, not nurses, not pharmacists um, or any other individuals. And of course, um, our preferred supplier when it comes to um, uh, our service for the pharmacotherapy element of the programme is Primed. And at that point, I'm going to end my slide and let Kadir take over and um, let me just close that. Do I just close it there? Yeah, now I need to go into presentation. Cool. Can can you see that, Sandy? Does that look yeah. clear? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. So um, can I begin by thanking um, Aesthetic Medicine Live for adapting their business model and creating this virtual event. I think this is fantastic. Um, in a sense, it very much echoes yesterday's presentation um, from Richard and Rick around marketing and digital health and about around adapting your business to meet the needs of your clients, which I think um, Aesthetic Medicine have done that superbly, so well done. Um, so the work Primed and the National Medical Weight Loss Programme are doing is very much aligned to this adaptation. And what we've created is an excellent opportunity for patients and healthcare professionals within our industry. So you know, what that means for, um, um, for the industry is you've got a, a really a unique opportunity. So at this point, I'd also like to thank Sandy for inviting me here. I think what the team at the National Medical Weight Loss Programme have achieved in a relatively short time period is nothing short of exceptional to have hundreds of trained and accredited healthcare professionals providing accessible treatments for patients living with obesity is amazing, especially during a time when our industry and the wider economy are facing unprecedented changes. Um, so my presentation is entitled A Collaborative Approach to the Management of Obesity, and I mean collaborative from a perspective of um, 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 sort of the, 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 the pharmacy side. Um, So before I go any further, I'll provide a brief bio into my background and the reasons for me being here. So I'm Kadir Hussain, the CEO of Primed Pharmacy. So technically my background is in biochemistry. And in fact, my thesis in 2002 was on the subject of novel treatments for the management and treatment of obesity. For 16 years, I worked within the pharmaceutical industry, working in commercial roles for large organizations who are, uh, who are in the space of chronic disease. Predominantly, my work was within uh, type 2 diabetes, obesity and respiratory medicine. Since 2019, I'm now the CEO of Prime Pharmacy. And kind of more importantly than any of that, I think I'm passionate about um, finding novel ways to treat obesity through lifestyle medicine and technology. Now, for this live, I'm coming into this from a few different perspectives, and I'm hoping that I can add some value to this discussion. So firstly, I've been involved with the National Medical Weight Loss Program since, uh, since its inception and seen it grow from an idea into a national organization that is currently helping many, many patients living with obesity. I've also worked within the pharmaceutical industry and I'd like to hope that I have an understanding of the, some of the challenges drug makers face when striving to create novel agents. I'm now part of a pharmacy team that now provides support to thousands of patients on treatments for obesity and have an insight into the challenges patients face. And, 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 and finally, as someone who's worked with many clinics um, or clinicians establishing weight loss services, um, I'd, I've, um, I'd, I'd hope that I can add some value to this, uh, to, to, to this discussion. So very quickly, I will go through the agenda for my presentation. 
um, which is um, Prime Pharmacy, a little bit more about us, who we are, um, our mission um, to tackle obesity. And I want to really focus on the National Medical Weight Loss Program. And um, I think what they're doing is phenomenal. Um, and then what this means for patients and ultimately what this means for um, uh, the aesthetic industry as well. So our story, so Primed is a pharmacy that has been providing NHS services since 2014 and we continue to do so. During the current pandemic, we've been very much uh, focused on working within our community and helping patients stay safe and having access to essential healthcare. Since 2018, we've been involved in the aesthetics industry with a specialist interest in weight loss. We are now a leading pharmacy in the UK, supporting aesthetic healthcare professionals deliver obesity services. Increasingly, our role um, in supporting clinics is extending beyond products. And over the coming weeks and months, we have some unique technologies which will provide support to both patients living with obesity and healthcare professionals um, delivering obesity treatments. So this is really a very exciting, exciting time for us and I'm grateful to Sandy and the National Medical Weight Loss Programme for, kind of, for, for, for creating this um, um, opportunity in many ways. So, um, so I'll now go on to our mission. So the prime mission is to enable healthcare professionals to deliver um, improved patient outcomes for those living with obesity. We achieve this through medicine, technology and clinical support. Okay. Now I'll reference yesterday's presentation again from Richard and, and, and Rick, which was um, which clearly kind of outlined the digital direction healthcare is moving. So whilst the aesthetics industry um, in many ways has grinded kind of to a halt and understandably obesity services are very much deliverable using technology and this creates an opportunity for us to continue our mission which is really um, exciting for us as a as an organization and what makes primed um, different um, so when it comes to uh, obesity and the support we can provide patients and clinicians i feel we are unique both in the things we are doing and also in the things we are working on as I mentioned earlier, we are in the process of deploying technology that will enable clinics to deliver effective digital and face-to-face -face weight loss services. This will serve patients and clinics during this current pandemic and well beyond. We have a unique team. Um, our team of pharmacists who are all accredited and trained in obesity provide an additional level of support to patients. Um, this helps clinics tremendously. Finally, we enable uh, clinics to access evidence-based medicines, which is um, uh, increasingly important. So now the bit I'm really excited about, which is actually looking at what, you know, the work um, done by Sandy and her team. Um, so, I mean, I'll just sort of start, begin with this quote, which is the UK's only community of certified healthcare professionals dedicated to the treatment of obesity. Okay. So, and what that means is we have over 170 clinics, all trained and accredited to the same standard, delivering obesity care to thousands of patients across the, across the UK. Um, more importantly, this is, really is a, is a community with both centralised and peer-to-peer -peer support. We know obesity is not a recognised speciality within the UK at least currently, and this makes it particularly challenging for clinicians to get the proper training and support to set up and deliver weight loss services. This is where the National Medical Weight Loss Program really stands out. So what uh, clinic, uh, clinicians receive is accredited training, marketing support, operational support, and in the most importantly, a supportive community. So what this means for patients, you know, ultimately this is this is a drive. I mean, if you look at, if you kind of flip back to Sandy's slides, you know, um, the numbers are scary. So you know what this means and, and the work the National Medical Weight Loss Program are doing right now, you know, what does what this means for patients? We know the NHS are providing very little funding, so through the work we're doing, patients now have an opportunity to access treatments. 
treatments which they would ordinarily have no access to. They have access to accredited healthcare professionals. So, you know, which which I think this is this is um, incredibly exciting. Which is um, the the idea that patients can go to a number of clinics across the country who are all delivering um, evidence-based medicine. Um, I think one of the criticisms of our industry, and understandably, is a lack of standardization. And I think when you flip to the NHS, one of the key drivers is standardizing care. And I think we can take something from that. And I think what Sandy's done here with her team um, um, is, uh, is is that is just that, which is uh, enabling um, um, a sort of standardization um, in, in, in the treatment of obesity. And ultimately, when you have hundreds of clinicians passionate about obesity, um, driving to improve patient outcomes, ultimately there's, a, there, there, there's the end patient who benefits. And in, in turn, what this does is it creates, um, you know, if you serve patients, it creates an opportunity for, for our industry. And this has created an absolutely unique opportunity within the aesthetics industry. As aesthetic uh, clinicians, you have established databases, a significant proportion of them will be living with obesity or struggling with their weight. Now is a great time for you to establish and deliver a weight loss service. And in doing so, you will firstly help patients living with obesity you will be you will be able to create a sustainable business and i think the wording was yesterday and 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 and, and before that you know create a sustainable business which moves into the new normal um you'll become part of a supportive community of healthcare professionals and guided each step of the way in setting up this service and also it's important to differentiate your clinic now um whilst you know obesity is um not uh, it's not it's not a very recent phenomenon i think the challenges around obesity and um, novel agents are actually relatively new so by offering and, and and delivering this service is a great opportunity for you to differentiate your clinic so this is kind of my last but one slide so i'd like to just move to the next slide and basically kind of cover a few next steps which i think would be valuable for for people so what I would say is for those who, um, for those who um, haven't spoken or don't know about the National Medical Weight Loss Program, I would strongly encourage you to go to the website and reach out to Sandy and speak to her yourself. Um, I'd book, you know, if you're able to. I know many of the courses are already booked up. Um, try book on a course. I think join the community, and I think I would echo everything that was delivered yesterday around adapting your business um, to the new normal. Um, and I think um, delivering uh, weight loss services yeah, is an exceptional opportunity that enables healthcare professionals to do that. So, um, you know, I'll now move on to again, the final slide, which is my contact details. For those who have any questions for me or just want a, you know, a discussion, you know, more than happy, um, I'd love to help in any way we can. And um, yeah, I look forward to meeting many of you in the in the coming weeks and months. And uh, yeah, work together. So, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that was a really interesting presentation. I really enjoyed that. So thank you both for um, for that. And uh, fascinating to see those slides with the um, the fat around the organ. I've, ne I've never seen that before. So thank you very much. We've had quite a lot of questions in, so I will um, I will get on with those. And um, so Elizabeth was asking. She says I have a Facebook group for nurses interested in setting up business. So wanted to feed back to them. What help do you provide for setting up and marketing, especially if someone is brand new to the business world? Wow, um, that, that, I, I could sort of have another webinar just kind of talking about the, <laughs> about those sorts of things. But but certainly um, we we give tremendous support to to our partners. Um, anyone that comes on the course, their clinic is added to the website, the national website, so that. Uh, the general public can actually see on clinic locators and um, clinics in their area offering the service. When their um, clinic is actually put onto the website, they're automatically generated a um, their own unique consultation form. So um, clinics actually have access to, and we're all that they're all the same, but they have a private electronic consultation form that is um, sent to 
patients, whether that's by a social media link, they're sent through it in an email or in a Facebook message, or they actually have a page built on their website that then has a button saying, start your consultation now. Um, that consultation is completed and then submitted by um, the patient, and that comes directly to the clinic's email address, um, which you can then actually um, to, to go through so that you can um, to see if that patient meets the inclusion criteria for any, any medical treatment or not. Um, and then appointments are made um, moving forward, whether that's face-to-face um, -face in clinic appointments or using uh, virtual appointments and new remote systems set up with Primed. There's lots of marketing support. Um, there's a huge Dropbox full of uh, any and every document that you can actually think of. Um, I, I think certainly if you listen to to, to some of the, the testimonies of some of our partners and we're, we're going to be feeding those through the National Medical Weight Loss Program mm -hmm. um, and drip feeding them in there because there are literally so many and I'm sorry I didn't put everybody's on because I know you've been busy doing them for me recently but yeah the supports there, marketing, clinical, it just as Kadir actually said in one of his slides so hope that's answered the question. Yes. Yeah. Sandy, Sandy, can I just add something there? I think um, I think it's important to emphasise the community support because I think the the community support you pr you provide is absolutely fantastic, and you have a lot of passionate clinicians there who yeah, not you know not only are you supporting them, I think they're supporting each other. And yeah. I think what I mean the number of clinics we've seen over recent weeks who have gone from training to establishing a model, commercialising a model, marketing a model. And I think I think it's uh, fantastic. Yeah, so, indeed. Yeah. And, you know, um, we had twenty-two new clinics uh, with us because that's the, the the limit that we can actually go to on the webinar training sessions. But there were twenty-two new clinics, and uh, quite a number of them in their first week of practice were, have been seeing five, six, and seven seven plus patients just in that first week. So we're really getting out there straight away to kind of help help the community, help patients living with obesity. Fantastic. And I guess that kind of answers one of the other questions, which is, are you continuing to deliver training remotely during this time? And um, also, do you have any spaces left on any of your courses? So I guess people can um, yeah. get in contact with you if, if they've got any questions like that mm -hmm. to find out about the training. But um, so you obviously are doing remote yeah. training. Yeah, we, we changed the one day um one day training course, which was always in Doncaster, uh, a full day, and we've changed that and, and actually actually expanded it, extended it into a 12 hour session. We now do two consecutive days doing all the theory and things in, in on the Saturday, which Matt actually delivers. And then we look at all the uh, everything else to do with setting up the practice and the support and remote prescribing and, and setting up clinics um, and all the support that goes with that looking at insurance and principles around safe prescribing and things so yes we are fantastic um, the next course is actually full we've got a course at the end of the month but, and but the next course after that is only one week later so the next course is actually the 6th and the 7th of june Great time to do something like this, I think, isn't exactly. it? because it's um, it's looking at how you can expand yeah. your services once we get back into business. And um, mm. as we all know, you know, and particularly working in aesthetics, weight mm. loss, obesity, these are big issues. Oh, and yeah. um, and not every patient can be treated with the body contouring devices. So it seems to sit really nicely with whatever people are doing in, in practice. You can take people through their journey. Yeah. Um, someone's asked, can dentists do training and treatment? And um, do, you, do you, I think you covered the, do you have to be CQC registered? You mentioned um, about Inspire to Outstand. Yeah, dentists can actually um, um, sign, up, sign up to become certified partners. We do actually have a couple of dentists on board already. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of CQC registration to offer services in slimming clinics, um, again, it falls out of scope for that professional um, body it's only registered medical practitioners i.e um, doctors registered with the gmc that need to actually register to offer this service at the moment, at the moment in time by the cqc fantastic and i know um the ladies that inspire to outstand they're very good at helping mm. with all of that stuff mm. aren't they um so there's a couple of questions about insurance um how much extra does it cost to add this um, onto your insurance and um, if you have another insurance provider you mentioned that you work with Cosmetic Insure but if mm -hmm. someone for example works with Hamilton Fraser do they need to switch insurers? Oh, um, okay oh. 
Uh, I'll answer the first question first. Then. <laughs> if uh, if someone's got an existing policy with Cosmetic Insure, then there is absolutely no additional premium to pay other than a thirty pounds admin fee. Now I say that um, in terms of adding the pharmacotherapy that that, that you'll be using uh, to offer these services, but the premium does actually relates to your annual turnover premiums increase as as, as uh, turnover increases so if adding that service increases your turn and your turnover into the next bracket then your 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 premiums will go up so that's cosmetic insure in terms of other um, insurance providers and there are some uh, some other insurance providers out there um, um you just need to speak to those um not all all um, insurance providers will cover all of the pharmacotherapy that we actually go through on on the course um, so that, that's something to consider too but I'm happy to take um, questions offline yes like. and I think that that um, stands also for any questions about the prescription only medications unfortunately we can't discuss those on no, a public forum no. this is being broadcast to Facebook yeah. so um, but I'm sure Sandy would be happy to answer any questions from anybody who wants to ask about that um, yes the um, presentation is available so um, it's been streamed live to Facebook so it will be on our Facebook group and on the assistant medicine website so if you did miss any of the um, of the content and you want to have a, a look at that you can certainly access that and um, any trouble get in touch with us at aesthetic medicine we can um pass on vicky i've uh, just been seeing a question from sharon sheriff um i'm going to read it out i hope everyone's okay with that but how do i market prescription medications on facebook um yeah. we actually work very very closely with lorna jackson who's actually um um, she's in the group with, with us, uh, she's in, in the certified partner group and for certified partners we, we are actually working to, together with Lorna, um, I don't know what that is, I don't mean, oh no, Kadir. <laughs> There's always someone with a five star jumps, Kadir. Um, so we're working with Lorna and we're actually going to be putting together um, a webinar for certified partners to look at, at exactly the, the AHA guidelines for, for advertising and promoting, but also looking at solutions around that so that we can actually advertise and promote the service rather than any medicines that we're actually delivering. And, and Lorna, it, bless her, is working to actually write that presentation just for our, our partners. She's very knowledgeable on all of that stuff, so that's a fantastic... Like that. <laughs> not worthy. It's so, yeah. a challenge for everybody, isn't it? Because, of course, these things are exciting and we all want to talk about mm -hmm. them on a public forum, but um, obviously there's, there's rules and regulations. Yeah. Um, OK, so let's see if I've missed any other questions. Um... I think if you've got any courses and um, questions about the specifics of training and whether um, how that can work, if you get in touch, Sandy, um, have, to, have you put your contact details? Do you want me to put your contact details in the yeah, chat? Or... Great. Thank you. Or do I type it? I'm not sure. I think you can yeah. probably type it. Yeah, that would be fine. And then if you just get in touch with Sandy, if you've got any specific questions about the training. Um, okay, let's have a look. Oh. Lots of questions coming through. <laughs> Just there we go. So those are the contact details. If anybody has any um, any questions, so can a nurse who is not a prescriber do the training? You mentioned a prescribing service, so I think you did cover this earlier. But if you can just um, go over that yeah, again, that would be great. Uh, you're a registered healthcare professional, so you are eligible to actually join the service and become a partner. Um, but you will work with um, an, an additional partner, whether that's somebody that comes on onto the course with you, who is has the legal authority to prescribe prescription medication, or alternatively, we actually offer that service. And some of our certified partners work with other partners to be able to offer that prescribing service. Now, unlike some medications. Um, it doesn't need to be a face-to-face -face, um, consultation with the actual patient for um, any of the pharmacotherapy that we use uh, to treat obesity. 
Fantastic. So that seems to be a lot of um, interest. So if anybody has got, we're running out of time now. So if anybody's got any other questions, um, please do get in touch with us at Aesthetic Medicine or, or use the contact details Sandy has provided. Um, Kazir and Sandy, thank you so much. That was really interesting and informative. Yeah. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people post lockdown who are going to be queuing up for um, weight loss services and obesity services. Okay. So um, it was a great time to do some training in this area. <laughs> Thanks so much, Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Lovely Thank to you see you both. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.